from the Sunday dance. All right. Amen. <laughs> All right. Today, the time of my sermon is letting go. And uh, please be praying for a revival. I want to mention that again. And uh, I thank Tim and Steph for these posters. They're really nice. Have them done at Staples, though, but I appreciate them. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we love you and thank you for this day that you've given us. And thank you for the time of laughter and joy and fellowship we can share. And thank you, Lord, for allowing us to meet around the Lord's table. And remembering our Lord and our Savior who died and suffered, like Philip said, upon that old cross of Calvary for our sins. And we pray for those who never accepted his, his love and his invitation, his uh, lifestyle. We pray that they will today come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord of their life and repent and be baptized and wash away their sins. God, we pray for those who are weak spiritually too. Restore them if there's some who've drifted away back to your house and to your kingdom. Lord, be with us now as we proclaim the message. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, uh, the title of my message is Letting Go. And... Uh, we need to let go of what holds us or what holds you and I back. And we asked, why? Why let go? And I think we can find in our study of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 2, three reasons why we need to let go of what holds us back. The three reasons here are, are, uh, are to, the, that we are to let go is examples, endurance, and enjoyment. And we think about this. What can we do in order to win the race of life? We're in a race. We're headed for heaven. The devil's out to get us, but we want to win. First of all, if you want to win the race, you've got to confess your sin. Whatever your sin is, name it. And if that sin is holding you back, you've got to let it go. And then repent of sin. If there's some sin in your life that's keeping you down, let it go. Choose to be released from that sin and ask the Lord to forgive you and he will forgive you. And enjoy the freedom and feel God's pleasure of being a child of God. Run with endurance. Focus on the gold. And our goal is to be like Christ. Be in Christ-like, which seeks and saves those who are lost. Well, this is a time for spring cleaning, I guess, for most of you women. I remember growing up in Forge Branch, and every year my mommy had a time of spring cleaning. Now, she went to the extreme, maybe, that a lot of people didn't go to. and uh, But usually, I remember she'd pick a pretty day and do some spring cleaning, maybe like yesterday. Usually it was on a Saturday when all us boys could be there. And we know that everybody got involved, and we dreaded it. Because mom would take, make us take all the mattresses outside and put them up on a, a she'd fix, put a horse and put some boards across it, make us lay a mattress or she'd put them on some old chairs or whatever. She'd make us take all the mattresses out of the house and set them somewhere where they wouldn't be on the ground. And she says, this is going to let them sun out and you boys sleep on these beds all the time. And she says, this is going to make them smell fresh. So we took all the mattresses out and laid them around the house just off the ground so they could be sun out. She'd also make us take all the cushions out of the couch and chair, take them out so they could sun out too. And uh, so that was her way of starting spring cleaning. And so she would put old uh, throw rugs uh, over uh, a clothesline. And she'd make us, she'd give us a stick or something, and she'd make us beat those rugs. Although she had a, a vacuum cleaner, she'd say, oh, that vacuum cleaner just gets what's on top. So we beat the rugs. And then uh, all the stuff she didn't want, you know, junk stuff that she wanted to get rid of. We'd take it down by the creek, we'd set it on fire, and she would get rid of all that stuff that she didn't want. Or all that stuff that was unused that she couldn't use no more. She would mop. She would clean. She would wipe. She would wax the floors. 
It was that time of year to clean and let go of unwanted and unused things. Well, the reason I mention that type of spring cleaning, it's because it's time for the church to do some spring cleaning and plan to win the race. You know, it's on our hearts to become the church that God is calling Furls Creek Church to be. Not the one that we might be comfortable with. You know, I believe God wants us to plan to win when it comes to our prayerful dependence on Him. I believe God would have us do well when it comes to our worship and our praise to Him, that we put all our trust in Him, that we trust God with everything in our life, and that we'd express our love and how much we care for our Father and our God. I believe He'd want us to succeed when it comes to our community here at Furls Creek. I believe He wants us to have people, relationships with people outside the church and let them know this is a place of people who care and who love people. I believe He wants us to hold true to the doctrine, to the Word of God. I think He wants us to proclaim the timeless and transforming truth of His Word. I believe He's given us the task of making committee, uh, of making uh, committed followers to Jesus. I believe God would have us to, to be advocates of doing all things well and be excellent for Him as we worship and praise Him. I believe that God wants us to be affected in, see, in seeking men and women and boys and girls and making, uh, helping them to make decisions to follow and obey Jesus Christ. Now, you may agree with me in all these things. You may say that's the kind of church we need. That's the church that you we need to have. And I agree with you. God would have us be that kind of church that I just described. But we know that we do not always get things right. And we don't always do these things that God expects us to do. And so our challenge today is let go of what holds you back. Do some spring cleaning. You know I came across this quote. Uh, the other day. And about being overweight. And it says it's hard. To let go of what's holding you back. When it's out in front of you. <laughs> I guess that's true. But the truth is. We need to let go. Of what's holding us back. It's important to us. As individuals, and it's important to the church. We need to let go of everything that's keeping us from accomplishing God's purposes in our lives. So as we come to our text today, I want you to look at our text. It's found in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 through 2. And I'm going to tell you three reasons why we need to let go of what's holding us back. And Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Wherefore? Seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside, he says, every weight and every sin that so does easily beset us. And he said, let us run with patience a race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set down before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. So look at the first reason we are to let go, and it's examples. I want to give you some examples of people who let go in the, in the New Testament and the Old Testament. And here is good news. We're not the first in line. Because when you look through the list in Hebrews chapter 11. Now you know Hebrews chapter 11 was known as the chapter of the heroes of the faith. You see that those who are mentioned. These men in Hebrews chapter 11. They have gone before us. They have successfully run the race. And we say that how did they successfully run the race? They did it by faith. They did it by their faith. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
Abel, think about Abel, Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Gideon, and David, and even Rahab is mentioned as one of the heroes of faith in the 11th chapter of Hebrews. These were all battle-tested men and women. They are witnesses to us. They're telling us what they know. They're telling us they have what they have experienced. You think about what Noah experienced. You think about what the patriarch like Abraham experienced in his life. Who left the country, not going to a country. He didn't even know where he was going, but he did it because he had faith that God would take care of him. You think about Noah who built the ark when all the people around him were, were uh, making fun of him. And, and, but he, there he continued to build the ark because God said there is going to be a flood. Noah believed God and he was a man of faith. Abraham again. Think about it. Here he is 100 years old. His wife Sarah is 90. And she laughed when they told her she was going to have a baby. But Abraham finally believed it was so because he had faith in God. And we think about Gideon. Gideon, oh Gideon, the man who took uh, just 300 people and defeated the whole army. How could he do it? Because he had faith in God. You think about David, the little shepherd boy, who uh, nobody wanted to fight the big Goliath. David says, I'll do it. And he got the sling, you know, and hit the giant Goliath and killed him. How could he done that? Because he had faith that God would be with him. These are all battle-tested witnesses that we need to follow. You know, how did they make it? How did they make it? They made it because they had faith. They made it because they are faithful to the Lord. The Bible says these all died in faith. Hebrews eleven six says, But without faith it is impossible, please God, for him that he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is reward of them that diligently seek him. They let go. These men I mentioned let go of what kept them from running in this race well. They let go and they let God through faith lead them. They left it behind with no regrets. So the race is now set before us. Our job is not to change the course. Our job is to accept what God has given us to do and do it. Let it be known it can be done. This race we can win. We can win this race that we're headed for. And that race is headed for heaven. It's time to run. It's time to do some spring cleaning. It's time to let go. And it's time to win. And turn your life. And let God have his way with you. The second reason to let go is endurance. This is a race of a lifetime. You know, many people come, become a follower of Jesus and they think this is a sprint. But you're mistaken. This is not a short race. I'm telling you, this is a marathon. Running and being in the army of the Lord Jesus Christ is not a sprint. It's a marathon from the time we come out of the baptistry to the time we meet the Lord. We're going to be in a race. We're going to be in a fight. And we're going to fight the devil every day of our lives. This is a race that will take a lifetime. How do we do it? Endurance. It requires persistence. It requires diligence. It requires perseverance. It requires endurance. My wife is probably one of the most persistent people I ever met in my life. And her son is just like her. And if she wants something, like she's wanting these cabinets that we don't need cabinets. But she thinks we do need cabinets. And she has been so persistent. So, you know, her car breaks down. She blows the engine. We go get another car. And I thought, now she has to forget the cabinets. <laughs> Guess what? She found some more she likes. And she won't give up. She's persistent. 
And Kyle, her son, is just like it. If he wanted something, he had asked you 527 times. Maybe 28 times. But anyway, he was so persistent. And that's what God wants us to be. He wants us not to give up. He wants us to be persistent in this race and be diligent to serve Him. Hebrews 12, 1. Look back at, that, at our text today. Let's look at what Hebrews tells us here in 12, 1. It's very significant at this point. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Let us lay aside. You get that? Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so does easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We need to get rid of anything that keeps us from running well. If it hinders us, it has to go. Anything that keeps us from running this race well, it has to go. It slows us down. It's got to be set aside. You know, you think of those who run a race uh, in a marathon or uh, at the Olympics. Uh, they don't wear two overcoats and a toboggan and uh, they don't wear heavy layers of clothing, do they? They, they even take their, uh, uh, they even take off their warm-up pants and shirt and, and they want to be just as slick and, and uh, uh, you know, with just shorts and a shirt with a number on it. They lay aside all that stuff because you don't run a race with an overcoat. Who runs a race with multiple layers on them? Nobody. They are discarded. They discard everything that keeps them and weighs them down to run the race. It's time to lighten the load and run. Whatever your load is that's keeping you from really serving God, throw it away. Lighten the load. When we played football, the coach would make us wear ankle weights and shoulder pads with weights in it to run in practice. But when we got in the game, we got to get rid of those weights so we could run faster. You know, we got to let every weight go that's holding us down. 1 Corinthians 9.24 says, Know ye not that they which run the race run all. He said, But one received the prize, so run that you may obtain. You and I are in this race to win. Not a laurel wreath or flowers around our neck that's a corrupt crown that will fade away, but we're running the race of faith in obedience to our Lord to receive eternal crown of life that's forever. You know, we all want to win. You know, Butch has told me uh, about these boys who used to get down here on the highway and, and, and they had, you know, had these fast <laughs> cars and, uh, you know, uh, five gears in and whatever. And they had that secret button they could push to go. Shoo. I don't know if y'all had that or not. But but anyway, they'd line up down here and race their cars, right? All the way up in this straight stretch out here in front of the church. Why? Because they liked to race. And, and you know why? What they wanted to, they wanted to win. They wanted to win. It proved their car was better, faster. Folks, it's the same way with us as children of God. We need to rev up our cars. We need to rev up our internal engines and try to win this race. Paul tells us what keeps us from running this and winning this race. He says, the sin that so does easily beset us. Sin is what often tangles us up. It keeps us from running. It keeps us from winning. When we act, fall, fail to act according to the standards of God and quit acting like godly people, then we're going to lose. When we fail to act according to the standards of God's righteousness, we sin. And sin weakens us. It weakens my resistance. It weakens my persistence to follow Him. It turns warriors into weaklings. It turns runners into crawlers. And let it be known, God hates sin. 
God hates the sin that's in you and me. You turn to Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. Look what God says. These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. Look at this list. A proud look, a lying tongue, and a heart that divides wicked imagination, feet that are swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaks lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. I want you to look at that list. Seven things there that God hates. And one of them is an abomination, he said. God hates these sins. And as you look at that list of these sins, are there any of those sins that are holding you back? Any of those sins that he mentioned that are keeping you from truly serving God? To run and to win the race, you must let them go. God will forgive you of every sin. And God wants us to hate that sin in the same way that he hates that sin. The good news is, at the very same time, God loves us with an unending love. He does not give up on us. He'll forgive us. He does not give up on us, but he keeps on calling us to let go of what's bogging us down and really being a child of God. John tells exactly the sin that is bogging many people down. First John 2, 15 through 16, he says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Then he mentions a list too. He says, for all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. John mentions these three things that keep people back. The Heavenly Father keeps calling us to let go of what is bogging us down your problem might be lust your problem might be pride so you gotta let it go so that you endure so that we will run so that we will win now we come to the last one the third reason we're to let go is for enjoyment you know i don't know about you but i am happy and i am delighted and i am praising him knowing where i'm going just think where we're going. You know, somebody said, if we really knew what heaven was like, we wouldn't care to die today. Really, if we just knew what heaven was like, somebody said we wouldn't care to die today. You know, did you know, you know how that commercial, uh, they, they got that Snickers bar yeah. and they said, now, if you're, if you're run down or whatever, you grab you a Snickers bar and that'll satisfy you and that'll hurt, give you energy and, and, and it'll satisfy your hunger, the Snickers bar. I laugh at that. Compare Snickers bar to heaven. The author of Hebrews would laugh at such a comparison. For the satisfaction of finishing the race and going to heaven to be with Jesus. Folks, that cannot be beat. That's satisfying just to think about it. The pleasure of winning this race will, will not, not be outdone. And Jesus Christ is certainly our example of this. He kept going, the Bible says, for the joy. You look back at our text in Hebrews 11 two. It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It not, did not mean there were not some painful and difficult times along the way. If anybody knows of any, uh, anybody knows how difficult it was, it was Jesus. Think of all he went through. But because he kept the end of mind, because he knew he was going to sit at the right hand of Father. He was able to endure. So in much the same way we are keep focus on Jesus. We are to keep the gold of Jesus front and center. That means running the race and it's a matter of Christ likeness. Or being like Christ. Living like Jesus. Loving like Jesus. 
being committed like Jesus, willing to sacrifice like Jesus, living his priorities, that gets us to gold as a winner. But the minute we turn our eyes off Jesus, we'll begin to sink. The minute we turn our eyes off Jesus, we, we, we begin to fall away from the gold and we slow down and our pace slacks and we must keep looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Putting the two words together, think about it. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. What does that mean? When you put these words together, we see that Jesus as God both creates and sustains our faith. We know that saving faith is a gift of God. We didn't do anything to earn it. Not something we come up with on our own. Ephesians 2 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. And that gift comes from Christ. He hits its creator. He is the author and finisher. He also is the sustainer of our faith. Meaning that true saving faith cannot be lost, cannot be taken away, cannot be given away. This is a source of great comfort to us as believers in, in times of doubt, in times of spiritual struggles. We know that Christ will sustain us because he's the author and finisher of our faith. Christ has created our faith. He'll watch over it. He'll care for it. And he'll sustain it. But don't get distracted by the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. This old world has to offer. We keep our eyes on Jesus. You know, when we compare the Christian life to running a race, we know we see there's no other way to run. We are to run this Christian race to win. We're to give the best of what we have. We are, we are to give every drop of energy, every drop of uh, ounce of effort to win the race called life because we want to go to heaven. But we cannot run to win if we're being held back. It's time to do some spring cleaning in our lives. Throw away those things that keep you from really serving God. And the truth is most of what holds us back is our own doing. What is holding you back? The author of Hebrews does not want us to miss this. He says, lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely or besets you. Get rid of the extra weight. I don't know what weight that you have. Maybe you need, maybe it's, it's the fascination with money. You want more money and you'll do anything to get money. Maybe it's your old habits of doing things and you're afraid to get out of your comfort zone. You're afraid to try something new for Jesus Christ. Let go. Could it be that you struggle with telling the truth? Possibly it's an unforgiving heart. You really know how to hold a grudge. And you can't let that go. Maybe it's hatred in your heart soared towards somebody. You got to let that go. Maybe you're not giving to God what you know belongs to Him. Could it be that we're afraid to tell the good news to people about Jesus Christ? What's holding us back? These ways and so many more are weights in our life that keep us from running well. You need to pray, study God's Word, and He'll help you if these things are holding you back. Choose to let go of what's holding you back. We not only confess the sins that's holding us back, but we also repent. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We as Christians have chosen a different way. The Bible calls us the ecclesia, which means the called out ones. We've been called out of darkness into the light of God's dear Son. I want you to choose to leave whatever is holding you down. Leave it behind. Decide to run this race with patience. And run that race with patience. That race that's set before us. And let go 
and we can run and we can win and we will win. Feel God's pleasure. Focus on a goal. Their, their distractions and their opponents like the devil uses to put things in our way who do not want us to win the race that's headed for glory. But if we focus and put our eyes on the prize and on Jesus, we will endure. Matthew 24, 13 says, But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. You know, I've never run a marathon, but I've saw them run on TV. And man, some of them guys may come in last. They may come in next to last. And they may be, their tongues might be hanging out. But you know what? They finished the race because they endured. When we focus on the gold, on the Lord Jesus Christ, and try to live like Christ, we will win. Because we will possess His passion. You know, if I'm to be like Christ, I care about people. And I want to win people. I, I, I'll let go of my fear and I'll be willing to be a witness to these people. I want to close with this illustration. Al Bracca worked as a uh, corporate bond trader. His office was in the, on the 105th floor of the Tower 1 in the World Trade Center. A week after the tower was hit and collapsed, Al's body was found in the rubble. According to his wife, Jeannie, Al hated his job. He couldn't stand the environment he worked in. It was a world completely out of sync with his Christian values. But Al wouldn't quit. He was convinced that God had sent him there to be a light in the darkness. The Barakas learned that Al had indeed been ministering to people during the attack when they were hit. Reports trickled in from friends and acquaintances. Some people on the 105th floor of the tower had made a last call or sent an email to a loved one saying that a man was leading people in prayer. A few referred to Al by name. When Al realized that they were trapped on the 105th floor in the building, and will not be able to escape. He shared the gospel message with a group of 50 co-workers. He led them in prayer. He prayed for them. Al was passionate about Christ. He shared his passionate passion of Jesus to seek and save what was lost and won. Think about Al. He had his last time that he'd be on this earth before the twin, the tower crumbled and they would be lost. You know, we can run like that. Do some spring cleaning in your life and let go of what's holding you back. How was running to win the race. Today, what's holding you back? You know, you can't win without Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and life. No man can come to the Father but by Him. Today, I want you to let go and let God change your life. Will you do that today? I don't know what's holding you back. Sometimes I wonder what's holding people back that I preach to every Sunday from coming to Christ. But whatever it is holding you back, will you come, come believing that He is the Christ? Repent of your sins and say, I'm sorry. Confess and say, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. We'll baptize you in water to contact the blood of Jesus and your sins will be washed away today. We come as we sing. Let go.